Hi there, for the past couple of weeks I've been building a shader using shader effects and I thought I would share it with you. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar what a shader is, a uh, shader is I guess the way that you convert um, vertices or like a, I think of like a wireframe, um, how you draw the triangles on that wireframe to make it into something you can see. Um, so that's what a shader does. Uh, shader effects is a plugin for 3ds max and it uses node based um, essentially programming but um but because it's node based it doesn't feel like programming which makes it much nicer for for artists who don't want to get involved with you know complicated languages you don't have to do that using shader effects you can just plug things together and things work and this is just a, a little example of a shader um, okay before we get started i'm going to show you the textures that we're going to be using in this little example uh, let's start with a diffuse. Um, so nothing particularly fancy about the diffuse. We also have a uh, normal map, um, and on the alpha we have a height map. Uh, we also have a specular color, and on its alpha we have specular level, and a new type of map, um, which I'm going to call occlusion map, um, because you know it, it, it that's what it does. Um, so if we, if we just look at one channel at a time, this will probably make a bit more sense. Um, the whiteness of every pixel indicates uh, for the red channel the angle at which the, that pixel becomes occluded by another sort of shape on this surface um, and we do that from the four different directions up down left right and that's what my collision map is and it's used in my shader and I'll sort of explain how when we get to that okay uh, let's start by looking at rid of this. Uh, no. um, I think this is yes, yeah, the right one. This is the bog standard material. Nothing special about it. Um, in Max, we've got um, all those uh, textures I showed you plugged in, and it looks pretty good. Um, and it kind of feels like it's got a bit of depth, um, particularly when we we have just one strong light, and it, it really looks the the light really gives it that illusion of depth. Um, but it kind of starts to fall apart when you look at it from a funny angle and you see it moving and none of the um, shapes are you know protruding forward in any way we, we kind of would expect to see them come forward a bit as we move the camera around and look at it from a different angle okay so that's our essential the problem that we're, we're going to be trying to tackle um, the other problem is that it doesn't cast shadows on itself and that was actually where I began with this this shader I wasn't I'm going to do any um, offset mapping or anything but um yeah if we if we put the light here and you know this is a a tall bit here um we'd expect to see a, a little shadow coming across here and th this black line um is simply um the other the other side of the tall bit that that isn't a shadow to me it's just you know not illuminated i i actually want to see um, two are kind of the same thing but i, I want to see a shadow kind of creeping across as i pull this further across you know um that's that's what you'd expect to see in real life if you had a shape that was sticking out of it it would you know occlude the light um, striking this flat surface in the middle and you know all over the place not just that um, okay so let's now look at our next example okay this one uses the most primitive form of offset mapping imaginable it's very very cheap but it also looks kind of wonky um, if this is the first time you've seen um, offset mapping in action, then you'll probably think, wow, that's amazing, it looks so 3D. And you'd be right, it does look kind of 3D, it's pretty special, huh? But it also kind of looks wonky when, you know, you look at sharp corners. Um, it does this doubling effect, you see these two sort of pale lines with a band of this black kind of stuff in the middle. And it'll do that whenever you've got some um, sharp edges, as well as other weird things, oops, being told I have low battery, okay, please go away, um, so yeah, it's it's cheap, it's cheerful, it's not really used much because it looks more ugly than it's worth, you know, the times you tend to notice it, the times it tends to go wrong, otherwise it's, you know, eh, it's fine, it's good for long distance, that, that is where it, you know, does expertly. Um, so it's a good um, low level of detail uh, shader technique to use, so it's it's worth having in the arsenal. The next one is relief mapping, which is very fancy and very good, 
and we can see it properly occludes um, details behind things um, which is very good, very nice um, but it is very expensive it uses um, short distance ray tracing lots of times and the more times you do it the more accurate it is on this particular example we have quite a lot so it's very pretty expensive, well it's very expensive um, but you can even use more to get a little bit of better accuracy so if we look at the uh, sharp angles from a glancing um, angle it does break down a little bit you can reduce that by um, doing even more ray traces but that becomes even more expensive and we still have the same problem that um, we're not casting shadows across the surface now the exact same technique used to occlude um, the viewers um, vision of the you know, texels can be used to do so with lights uh, the problem of course there is it is just as expensive for a light as it is for the viewer um, which means you know you're doubling the cost for just one extra light to cast shadows if, if heaven forbid you want two lights to cast shadows across it you know you're tripling the cost and, and so on so not the most practical thing unless you really um, got a got a powerhouse of a computer or I dare say you have five years on this video in which case I'm sure everything I say is completely obsolete um, because power's you know always going up compute processing power so I'm sure you know we'll probably be using this more and more in games but for now I want to introduce oops I haven't changed some of the settings oh you didn't see that edit sorry for the not very subtle editing here but um, another thing that I forgot to mention the first time I recorded this was um, Another drawback of both this and the previous method, um, when you're moving the camera, you'll notice, do you see this this line we have here? I hope you can see that. Um, zoom in, hopefully you can see that. Um, see how it moves? Um, now this is a line that I have at the edge of this texture, and what we're seeing now is the other side of the texture. Um, this is something that happens a lot in other techniques I've come across, um, and it doesn't isn't compensated for. It's something that could be, but, um, you know, uh, I've built that into mine, so uh, a little you know challenge for you. See if you can spot that happening in mine. You you won't um, because you know the edge stays at the edge, um, which is defined by a sort of variable. A certain height will be your not moving height, and everything else will kind of move. You know, dependent on that. Um, so you see that over there on the other side. Um, okay, end of edit. Um, I want to introduce my own brand of magic. There we go. Um, so this is my one. Um, I think it looks pretty good. It does break down occasionally. It has some wibbly things going on here and there. Um, but it is cheaper than the relief mapping and um, a lot nicer looking I think than the, the cheap offset mapping. So it's kind of a compromise somewhere between the two. Um, it does use that one extra texture which of course is expensive, you know, a whole extra texture just for this effect, but it's a nice effect, so um, there's that, but also it has other benefits um, because of that texture. So um, let's add some ambient occlusion. Uh, I'll pull over my shaders um, settings, I'll move this for you, and we have a ambient occlusion thing here, so um, we can easily just punch up that number as much as we want, obviously that's too much, but um, you can see what the ambient occlusion is doing there. Um, and I have considered uh, making the ambient occlusion kind of directional. That would actually be something that's pretty easy to do, but um, yeah, I decided against it because we have a proper shadowing thing anyway, so it seemed a little unnecessary. Uh, I'm going to leave that at maybe 2. I think that's probably good. Just to remind you the difference between 0 and 2. kind of makes those details pop a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Let's add in a light. Same t test we did before same results at the minute. We um, have this bit which we'd expect to see in a shadow. We've even got this little little bit here which is actually illuminated because its um, normal direction is pointing towards the light which is complete nonsense because it should be in a shadow. Um, so let's add in, add in this shadow that I've set up. Um, I think 60 is a good amount. Oh I've gone and changed some other settings haven't I? Oh why have I done that? There we go. So now we have a shadow which is pretty cool. Um, we can actually increase the amount of the shadow if we want. Um, we can make it sharper, uh, which is actually what it was at just a moment ago. See now our shadow is, is very sharp, which you might want for a very direct, very small light. 
Um, but if you've got a very large light, you can uh, conversely, you know, make it a very soft shadow. Um, something that would be horrifically expensive to do with um, with, with ray tracing. So, um, and this is actually pretty cheap to do on several lights. That's not a problem. Um, all because it's pulling essentially pre-calculated um, figures from the occlusion map that uh, that I had before. Um, so let's set some that's, that, blah, set that to something that's slightly more tasteful. Um, in fact, maybe even a bit less than that. And uh, let's move this around actually, just so you can see it a bit better. Move this around, you can see the real benefit here. See, as we drag over, um, we have shadows which kind of creep across the surface of that, that middle bit. Um, so that's pretty cool. We also have little details here. Um, see, we've got a high bit here, it's casting a shadow over the top there, which you know goes away as we um, poke that up. And these two arched bits, which are taller than these bits here, um, start casting a shadow, but the light does sort of get through the lower dipped bits. Um, all pretty cool, uh, makes it look pretty convincing, I think. Um, something that you don't, I, I at least haven't seen in, in anything, um, what I would call to be um, self shadowing. I mean, you, like I say, you can get it on um, the uh, relief mapping technique, it's just so expensive. Um, but uh, yeah, so that shadow is a little bit too strong for anything you might like. Um, that will probably do. Um, as you might have seen over here, we have another little example. Um, we've got a little wall that I've set up, a little stone wall. Um, just another texture to demonstrate another use of this shader. Really, this shader can be used with anything that uh, has shape on its surface. Um, I've designed it for a specific thing in mind. Um, which I have yet to make, but um, hopefully it will do what I need to. Um, so, you know, if you see something like this in a game, you might say, uh, oh, that's a nice little bit of wall, let's have a look at that. Oh, yes, very good, well done. It looks pretty 3D, good job, technical artists. Um, where, of course, it breaks down is um, its silhouette, obviously, because it is just texture, and I'll show you the wireframe here. Um, really, very simple wireframe. Of course, it means that um, you know the silhouette is very uninteresting. So, um, for that reason, this technique is very good for intruded details, but extruded details, which would affect silhouette, um, kind of you lose a bit of believability when you see that. Um, so, particularly rounded corners are kind of a nice way to get around that because it's less obvious um, than a square corner, which is what you know all these corners are kind of rounded. Show it off a bit better. Anyways, um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I can strongly recommend uh, Shader FX. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work with the latest version of 3ds Max. With uh, that's 3ds Max 2012 at the time of recording. Um, I do not know whether they have plans to update it or what, but um, it totally broke my 2012. But it does work just fine in 2011, um, and it's really cool. And you can export the shaders to a whole host of different. Um, well, they're all strictly the FX format, which is used by DirectX, but um, there, are, there are slight engine-specific sort of tweaks and things that um, ShaderFX does for you. And although I haven't you know, taken it into a game engine just yet, um, I have it on good faith that it'll work. My good faith is their word, but, but I'm sure it's good. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Bye.